Right, I'm going to do some uh, autism myth busting today. Uh, just a few little things, just a short video, nothing too big. Um, I'm up in my, my Lego room, uh, as you can see. Uh, it's actually tidy, I can sit on the floor today, which is quite nice. Anyway, so autistic myth number one, autistic people cannot feel empathy. Everyone knows this one, really, really commonplace. Um, a lot of people seem to believe that this is the case. Um, when I think the reality is um, a, a bit more complicated than that. I think um, I'm starting to increasingly believe that autism at its very core, at its very heart, is a, is a kind of um, uh, oversensitivity to everything. Uh, light, stimulus, sound, emotions, everything that you can kind of think of. Uh, even, in, even special interests are kind of a manifestation of a kind of sensitivity to the interestingness of a thing, if you like. So we get kind of sucked in by it because we are sensitive to just how cool and interesting that thing is. And that will be different for everyone, of course. But the, the point is that, that um, other people's emotions overwhelm us. They, 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 um, a lot of autistic people, most of, from my experience anyway, talk about, you know, feeling like you're, 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 you're being battered by emotions. Like you, you, you know the emotion is happening. You know the other person is angry or sad or scared or happy or whatever it might be. But it's too much. It's like staring into a bright light or something like that. Uh, and therefore, I guess we don't act how um, people want us to act uh, in, in, those, in those situations then. Neurotypical people expect a certain type of behaviour to show empathy, you know, a hug or whatever it is, or th those things that people do. Um, and if we don't do those, then that comes across, rather than as being, um, rather than any other reason, it comes across as us being non-empathetic. Um, and and I, I simply don't think that's the case. Okay, uh, number two, autistic people don't feel emotion. You know, the robotic stereotype. Um, like, like I've, I've been watching a bit of Sherlock this weekend. I've never really got into it before, and I'm not entirely sure I'm into it now. But I, I've watched, you know, if you know the BBC one with um, Ben Bendel, Dick's Cumbumble Batch in it, uh, Smog, or the man who looks a bit like a penguin. Um, he um, and he plays the role of Sherlock in this very kind of cold, robotic way. I think at one point, um, Watson calls him a machine, uh, and then at another point, he refers to him as having Asperger's, which I thought was very interesting. Um, you know, the, the Sherlock character in those BBC adaptions, uh, adaptations recently w was very emotionless, you know, famously kind of cold and logical and all the rest of it. And I think that's a stereotype. That is a stereotype of autistic people, especially those with Asperger's, um, whatever that means. Um, and it's it's tremendously pervasive, you know, to the, 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 or, and, and that links into that thread I did the other night about how um, autistic people can't be artistic. You know, the, the, the assumption that autistic people don't do art, they don't do creativity, they do logic and mathematics and, and engineering and that kind of thing. And it's all wrong. I mean, it's just wrong. Talk to any emotion, uh, any uh, autistic person, you, you know, uh, online or elsewhere, and, and they'll tell you about a dozen times where, you know, in recent, in, in recent days, they'll have been overwhelmed by the feelings of their own emotions. They might not necessarily know exactly how to define them. That's quite common. Like, I don't really know what I feel. I feel something, but it's very confusing to me as to what that something is. That's that's a thing, I think. Um, but to say that there's no emotion there at all, like we're kind of ghouls or robots or something like that, it's just complete nonsense. It's absolutely rubbish. Um, I can't say whether my emotions are stronger than yours or, or, or whatever. It's impossible to say that. But I do know that I feel emotions and that they are quite... Uh, intrusive and they can be quite troublesome at times. Um, they are there, okay? If you deal with autistic people, they are going to have emotions. If they haven't got emotions, I mean, it's possible that might be something to do with autism, but it could also be something else going on there, okay? I don't know. It's not my place to speculate, but but it's not an autistic thing to be emotionless. Um, wave my hands around, I can see. Um, anyway, uh, number three, I was going to talk about um, how autistic people can't um, can't communicate can't talk, you know, uh, and obviously a lot, a lot can't, you know, non-verbal is a thing and, and that there are a lot of autistic people out there who, who for, for various reasons cannot or, or, or may not communicate through spoken words to, to other people. Uh, they might be able to communicate through other means like um, electronic, you know, techno technological uh, solutions and things like that. Um, but that's, that's, a, that, that's another story and that needs, I'm, I'm not best placed to talk about that so much. I still don't know enough about it. I'm trying to learn, um, but it's it's a big subject. It's a little, still a little bit, you know, off my um, off my radar. And frankly, it's a little bit off everyone's radar, um, which it, which is no good. I mean, it can't carry on like this because um, 
you know, we need to be making sure that we are, you know, by we I mean, you know, autism advocates, I suppose, that we are in including the whole, the whole, you know, the whole range of, of, of people in that. Um, but that's for another time. I think that, that needs a more kind of thorough um, talk. I think than, than just a couple of you know, myth busting uh, snippets. So, so I'm going to talk. I'm talking really here about the idea that autistic people can't speak in front of people, like they can't um, they can't lead meetings, or they can't do presentations, or they can't do speeches, or they can't sing on stage, and all these kind of things. Because that's a widely held belief, I think. You know, and it confuses people a lot. You say, "Oh, I'm autistic," and they were like, "Yeah, but what? You can stand up in front of." thousands of people and give speeches and stuff and people can't kind of compute that but yeah we can <laughs> because that's a very different situation um you know you, you you give a lecture in front of 300 people you do a video like this you know where where all you're really relying upon is your own eloquence and your own brain uh and nothing else really there's nothing to distract me here there's no you know, no one in the audience, there's a, you know, I mean, there, there presumably will be an audience at some point, but they, they are not contacting me right now. So I'm free to just do what I do. Same if you're on stage. If you're a singer, if you're a comedian, then you get heckling, but that's kind of half your job to deal with that, isn't it? The point is, you're alone up there. You're doing your thing. There's no interchange. There's no conversation to be had. There's none of that intensely difficult um, stuff that occurs during a conversation that autistic people do struggle with. You know, the, the unknown cues and the inherent kind of implications and all the weird stuff that neurotypical people seem to think, you know, is necessary for a conversation. Um, that, that doesn't come into play if you're giving a speech or you're singing in a band or you're, um, I don't know, what else can you do? Uh, some kind of, you know, a, a TV presenter or something like that. You know, but, uh, Chris Packham, for example, good example. Um, you know, being on camera delivering really really interesting fascinating detailed information um but there's not that conversation thing going on there's not the turn taking there's not the implicature the, the implied information um it's a totally different thing so yes autistic people can get up in front of people and they can talk uh which is why a lot of us are teachers it seems uh, it seems increasingly the case that there are a lot of autistic teachers out there okay and then finally fourth um the idea that autistic people um, are kind of inherently good at maths and inherently good at science. This is kind of related to the whole idea of autistic people not being, you know, able or, or like allowed to do art. Um, but it's a bit different, really. There is an assumption, thanks to Rain Man and Sheldon Cooper, bless him, and Sherlock to an extent, and all these, you know, and actually even Christopher, is it Christopher Boone, the character in Curious Instance, The Dog in the Nighttime, he's a mathematician too. If I remember right, I read that a long time ago. Um, so there's this general understanding that if you're autistic, then you're going to be really, really good at maths. You know, kind of <laughs> straight away, you know, you can do mental arithmetic instantly and you've got, you know, the science periodic table in your head and all the rest of it. Now, obviously, there are autistic people who are like that, presumably because those things are their special interest or, um, or or because that's an unrelated thing to autism. Some people go to maths, some people aren't. It's not really anything to do with autism. The fact is, there are lots of autistic people who are awful at maths, frankly, um, because, well, why shouldn't there be? You know, the, 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 being good at maths is not a sign of autism at all. It's, it's just not really related. Though there is a like of logic and reason in autistic people, that's mostly, to, I think, to help them get through the day. Like we want things to be predictable and straightforward and um, and kind of easy to deal with because we're so bombarded by everything all of the time in our lives. So we want everything to be nice and calm. Um, and I suppose, you know, for some people, mathematics might provide that. But frankly, in the same way that painting a painting or reading a good book can provide that kind of stability and calm too, can't it? I mean, you know, it's, it's not it's not unique to maths. Um, I guess there's that logical aspect behind maths and science where, you know, there's only one correct answer and all the rest of it. Um, but there are so many autistic artists out there and autistic English specialists and humanities specialists. But I don't think that that's that's a kind of key element of what it is to be autistic at all. I think it's, uh, again, it's a myth. So there we are. Four little myths, very rapidly, um, kicked into the grass uh, on this on this Saturday evening in the rain. Okay, so I'll leave it at that and I will s do another video again sometime soon. Okay.